And this Corona lighting tutorial will turn this render into this one. I'll teach you how to set up a scene light by light to achieve a photorealistic result with Corona, applying lighting concepts used by professional photographers. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, let me introduce myself. My name is Ciro Sannino, I'm a Chaos Academic Partner and for over 20 years I've been specializing in photographic techniques applied to rendering. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my videos. This image is the simulation of a photographic shot in a so-called limbo, which is completely white and curved space, exactly what we are going to replicate in 3ds Max. To obtain this result, I've also associated a material with a base material, a corona physical material actually, whose color is almost completely white, and to which I slightly reduced the roughness value to be able to appreciate reflections on the surface. And here we are in our shot. The easiest way to get started to illuminate this object is by using the environment light. Simply by increasing this value and starting the interactive render, we can see that the object is already in a wide environment and that there are slight contact reflections. But the ambient light comes from all angles and this does not allow to the object to have a good shape, which from a photographic point of view is not acceptable. So let's turn off this environment light and we begin to build the photographic set. This time, however, I will start with a light that I generally use only at the end, the fill light. The fill light in this case is positioned behind the armchair and it will make Limbo very bright. If we turn it on, that's it, we already see that this works well. Limbo is white and you can see the horizon. And we also have some pretty contact shadows. These contact shadows are produced precisely by the bounds of this light. That's why I start from here, because this light not only illuminates Limbo, but creates even these reflections which are fundamental to the kind of style we are looking for. What we need now is of course to illuminate the object. For this, we have a primary light. This primary light is placed slightly behind the armchair and serves to give it shape thanks to its light intensity and the sides. We turn it on and here is the result we got. It is already much more photorealistic than what we got with ambient light alone. The object now has a good shape and you can see the gradients and the steps. But unfortunately this light illuminates the object but also the surface on which the object is placed. Doing so cancels the contrast reflection we have obtained with the fill light. In fact if I turn it off we can see these contact reflections that disappear if I turn on the light again. So to solve this problem, we will do something non-photorealistic, but that in an abstract photography situation like this, it works very well. We will exclude Limbo from this light. So I select the light that interests me. I go into the area of non-physical properties and put the Limbo among the objects to be excluded. As you can see, we have recovered the contact shadows and reflection. Of course, we also lost everything that the light produced by bouncing off the limbo, so we have to compensate by introducing the secondary light on the left and the secondary light on the right. By turning on the light on the left, we can see that we get this side well lit. 
Obviously, we are going to adjust it based on the type of a subject and the shape we want to give. And the same goes for the other light. In this way, unlike before, we illuminated the object and gave it a good shape, and we have not lost the contact reflection which, as I mentioned before, is fundamental. In some cases, however, it may be necessary to reduce the intensity of this reflection, to make it, for example, more subtle. But if we simply reduce the reflectivity of this material, as you can see, this action modifies the reflections in general, but it also affects the whole scene. So, we have to find another way. We can definitely use ambient light again. As you can see, when the environment light increases, the reflection too becomes lighter. Obviously, everything got brighter here, so we have to compensate by slightly reducing the exposure. Anyway, I always prefer that the approach is more photographic. I need to use lights to shape the scene, and therefore a light with a specific direction is always better than an ambient light which is non-directional. So let's turn off the ambient light and introduce a new bigger light that illuminates the whole scene from above. This light is often known as a butterfly light and is commonly used in photographic studios when photographing cars or motorbikes. I turn this light on and we can see that it lights up the whole scene, also reducing the amount of a reflection we have on the ground. Basically, by changing this light, in practice we also measure how intense the contact reflection will be. If you want to learn more about Corona lighting and other topics, sign up for the demo section of my course. It's free and you'll find other lessons that I'm sure you'll love. You'll find everything in the description. Ciao!